Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Now, today I'm going to discuss a, a further into the parametric equations and curves topic, which I introduced in my last video. It is a very interesting topic indeed. So, moving forward, parametric equations and curves. So, imagine that a particle yeah, moves along the curve through time as shown below. So, we'll graph this out. Say we had an x and y axis like that. And let's say the particle starts off here, and then through time it moves along this path like this, etc. Yeah, so it's moving across. We draw an arrow. So let's say it ends up here through time. Uh, then eventually, let's say it gets to here, and it keeps going. So the arrow is indicating which way it's going. And it goes over here, and then it goes all the way across here. And, and it just keeps going on. Let's say even before this, it had a previous point before. Yeah, and now uh, let's say we wanted to describe this uh, curve, but the problem is it's impossible to describe this curve, highlight that, uh, by an equation of the form y equals f of x because this curve fails the vertical line test. Actually, I actually haven't gone over this vertical line test uh, in detail before. I'll go over it in a further video in more detail. Basically, if we have the function y equals f of x, uh, the problem is this needs to be one to one. So it needs to be one to one. In other words, we need one x value and y value. Yeah, yeah, one. Uh, so we need one x value for each y value. For example, if we had a curve, let's say we'll just exaggerate this one uh, a lot. So let's say y and x. So if we had something like this, and then if this is equal to y uh, equals f of x, the problem here is let's say we had an x value here, x1. So by the vertical line test, we just draw. All we do is draw a line across and see how many values of y we get. So it needs to be only one y value. But here we have y1, we have y2, y3, y4, y5, y5, y6, etc. So it keeps going on and on. So the problem here is if this is y equals to f of x, then what we have is f of x1 is equal to, well, it could be equal to y1, uh, y2, y3, etc. It keeps going on and on, but the problem is in each one of these, y1 is a value, let's say across here, y2 is a value here, y3 is here, 4, but these are not the same values. So we have y1 is not equal to y2, is not equal to y3. So this, this is a problem right here. Yeah, but each one of these is equal to f of x1. So this is, well, not possible. So this fails the vertical line test. All you do is draw a vertical line. It needs to be only one to one. So because it fails this, if you just draw a line across, you can see that we'll have multiple y values for every one x value. Yeah, but even though we can't graph it using this uh, general y equals fx form, but what we know is that since the particle is moving through time, the x and y coordinates of the particle are also functions of time. For example, uh, at this point here, yeah, at this point, let's say at this point here, if we call this t0, that's initial time, we call this t1. At this point, what we have is we can have x1 and y1. And uh, x1 could be over here, x1, and then y1 is over here. So basically, whenever the time changes, we can have different values of x and y. So those are functions. We can make them uh, functions of time. Yeah, so in other words, so we can write x equals f of t and y equals g of t. Such a pair of equations is, is often a convenient way of describing a curve and gives rise to the following definition. So the definition is suppose that x and y are given as functions of a third variable, t, called a parameter by the equations x equals 2 f of t and y equals 2 g of t. Yeah, and we're now going further in the definition where these are called parametric equations. Each value of t determines a point x, y, which we can plot in a coordinate plane. As t varies, the point x, y equals to f of t, g of t varies and traces out a curve, which we call a parametric curve. 
And yeah, we can see this over here if we just plot these points out. So then here, let's say we had t2, and then this one is gonna be, well, let's say this is gonna be x2, y2, etc. And then, then we have t3, and then t4, and it could be anywhere we want because the x and y's are functions of this so they can change. So we're not basing it on a strictly y equals f of x form, which we can't do that. So, and also further I want to note is, well, the, the parameter t does not necessarily represent time, and in fact, we could use a letter other than t for that parameter, but in many applications of parametric curves, t does denote time in most cases, therefore, we can just in interpret x, y equals f of t, g of t as a function, no, as a position of a particle at time t. So this is a good way of just remembering it, is just, just as if you're moving a particle through time, because many applications actually uh, deal with time as uh, as well. So yeah, that's why the t is used the most, uh, but there are other applications which you could just do different variable, etc. But this is a good way to see it. So as you move through time, uh, the functions x and y also change the values of, of themselves. And I'll go over, the, uh, over some examples in later videos, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you enjoyed. It's a pretty interesting video, and, and with this you could graph some very cool, uh, cool shapes. As, as you can see, even this general shape right here, you could do stuff like this, which you just couldn't do with this one here, with the general y equals f of x, otherwise, yeah, which, which you can't do. These ones have to be kind of like more uh, linear in form just because you need only one value of y for one value of x. But this one can change because the x and y's change, etc. You could do uh, really cool circles and other kind of shapes. Anyways, that is all for today. If you learned, and like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another math easy solution.